So, hello everyone. We welcome you uh, on uh, Idea Statica webinar on topic BIM design and code check of BIMs created in CI Engineer. Today's presenters are Lukáš Jiříček, a product Hello, engineer, Omar. and myself, Petra Komárková. <clears throat> uh, before we get to the actual content, I would like to inform you that we are using a GoToWebinar application. If you have any questions, please uh, type them into question pane. Uh, all questions will be answered during the webinar or after the webinar and if we miss uh, someone we will answer them via email so today's topic is about a complex uh, beam process um, we uh, will have a global model in CI engineer in this case it's a concrete reinforced uh, structure. It's a prefabricated structure. You can see it in the uh, in the screen. Um, we will show you how to import this global model into Idea Statica Beam. Then we will um, choose, let's say, the most critical beam. Uh, import, it, import this beam into Idea Statica beam and do some uh, checks, uh, design of reinforcement, uh, calculation of deflections, and so on. And then uh, we will um, export uh, this, in this case, the whole beam into Idea Statica detail, input some uh, openings, as you can see in the screen, and uh, perform their analysis and do some uh, checks according to CSF method, which is a continuous stress field method. So uh, this was just a brief introduction about uh, this webinar. And now I would like to give a word to uh, Lukáš, who will show you the actual example. So. Welcome. Sorry, sorry. I hope you can you can hear and see my screen now. So thank you, Petya, for a word. And uh, <clears throat> I will continue with the introduction of the of the of the model. Uh, here you can see a um, like finite element model. It's a, a B model in uh, CI engineer uh, on the structure uh, is loaded uh, by several loads like uh, self weight superimposed that load snow uh, wind on the right side and on the left side so uh, the combinations uh, were automatically created from the CI uh, generator you can see I have uh, approximately 40, 40 combinations. Uh, some some of them are for uh, ULS, and uh, some uh, some of them are for uh, SLS, service with limit states, as characteristic uh, frequent and quasi permanent combination, uh, which uh, we really need to um, check the structure. So uh, now we will run a linear analysis and uh, wait for the for the results okay you can see uh, the static analysis was completed and uh, at first uh, we need to create uh, xml file so i will go through the tools xml document and uh, we have to uh, create a special DXF, uh, I sorry, DXF, but only XML file. So I only delete all these informations, and uh, I have to load our template. Uh, the template is um, included in this file. This is the path, and uh, we have to choose uh, Idea Import Designer 2014 uh, .tdx. Okay. 
we can see uh, now the template is uh, creating and we have to wait for it and all the internal forces uh, beams uh, loads are uh, exported to this to this file and we will create it with the button export and uh, download this uh, file to this file uh, to this uh, folder okay I, I will do that and uh, after that we can continue to our beam solver or to our beam uh, beam application okay it will take a few seconds and okay oh, yeah great now you can see this is a xml file so i will close it and minimize it oh something wrong i hope sorry sorry for some troubles uh i have to i hope you will see my screen the right side i hope okay mm, but uh, okay so i will run uh, idea statica and here I will go through the BIM and import from other programs. Now uh, I have to find the folder with the XML file, see XML files and here you can see the file was uh, generated here. So I will open it and all internal forces combinations and uh, the members are transferred or exported to our application BIM. And uh, I will check these three checkboxes. Uh, I, I would like to try to connect horizontal members into one selectable dimensions or uh, to into single uh, design group, uh, the vertical as well. And the third one as a design member has the same name as the first involved member. I would like to have it as well. So I will close it. So it's gonna, Take a few seconds, and uh, I can see I can see the whole beam module or beam uh, structure, uh, which was exported from uh, CI Engineer with all all combinations. Now uh, I will go through uh, result classes, and uh, here you, you can see that uh, the combinations were automatically sorted to the ultimate limit state and service cell with the limit state as uh, for characteristic combinations, frequent and quasi-permanent combination, and as well uh, the characteristic combination for the check of the deflection. So uh, now we will go through the result classes where we only uh, control if everything is uh, correctly sorted to, uh, to these groups. It uh, could be the same as in this step. So I think it's fine. So we can continue and we will go uh, to the next step, uh, member 1D forces. So uh, I have mentioned that um, uh, we sorted this structure to design groups so i can change it this is design group for a vertical let's say columns and i would like to check the beams so i will change it this is my uh, design group where are all, uh, all all members were automatically sorted to uh, to one group and uh, all members will be reinforced uh, uh, and checked uh, as well okay so now i will only display the uh, wireframe view and here in this pen button you can select and check uh, the internal forces for every combination as here you can see uh, uh, here you can see com bending moments uh, or shear force normal force you can see uh, everything uh, can be displayed here uh, so uh, we can continue to part of design 
uh, this design group of the of the members. So we will go through the concrete design 1D and uh, continue to the tap data. Oh, I'm sorry, I have forgotten something to do. I have to go through the design member and here in the material, you can see here is a concrete with the concrete grade C30 slash 37. But here is a bilinear uh, diagram of the concrete and I would like to have a parabolic rectangular. So I will change it here. I will use the pen. Parabolic rectangular, okay. Everything is fine and I can continue because we will uh, compare uh, the data um, or the results in the application beam and uh, application detail as well. And in the application detail uh, is uh, implemented uh, parabolic rectangular diagram for uh, concrete. So to the, uh, to, we could compare it. We have to, uh, we have to have the same parabolic rectangular diagram. So I will go through the data. And you can see all checks uh, for uh, ultimate limit states and serviceability limit states uh, are automatically uh, checked and uh, we can let it and calculation deflection as well. But uh, I would like to turn the lateral stability off the checkbox because it's not necessary for the reinforced concrete, uh, concrete beams. <clears throat> so uh, I think everything uh, okay for for that for data and we can continue uh, through the reinforcement tab in the reinforcement tab uh, you can see that uh, the structure or the design group uh, was automatically um, divided uh, according to cross section you can see that uh, the zones are automatically divided along the whole uh, two members uh, and uh, the zones C and C are the same because the same this is the same cross section and uh, we are in the application beam so uh, we would like uh, to use the checks uh, where the Bernoulli Navier hypothesis is valid so we will check only this part this part of the structure or this part of the beam so I can uh, switch it off all all the checks for the A and B uh, section or A and B part of the of the beams. So I will check it off, and uh, I can let only these two checks uh, of the beam. Now I will go through the uh, reinforcement editor where I will uh, upload uh, where I can upload uh, the reinforcement. Now you can see I, I can use uh, the parametric design for the reinforcement, but uh, I have predefined some templates which will be used for uh, our uh, for our uh, let's say cross section. So I will use import import reinforcement, and here you can see I have predefined the reinforcement template. Now we can see how does it look like and uh, we will go through the stirrups where uh, I would like to have only this stirrup effective for torsion and for sure. So uh, the second stirrup will be ineffective. So I will switch it off and uh, we have finished the reinforcement and we can continue we can continue to the check. Uh, before the whole uh, whole process or whole uh, static analysis or the checks for a beam uh, with a deflection as well. So we will go through uh, the detailed check only for the C region, this C region, where we can see uh, some detailed checks. Uh, okay, so I will run the analysis. You can see it was a really fast process and uh, we can see that uh, the maximum utilization was 93.1% uh, for uh, interaction. So we will click on it and go through the results, interaction, and you can see uh, how looks uh, 
uh, the strain and the stress uh, along the high of the cross section. And we can see that the reinforcement is utilized uh, approximately to uh, to the plastic branch or is on the plastic branch and here we can see the shape uh, the shape of the uh, concrete in compression and reinforcement as well is considered so this is 13.3 megapascal in the compression okay uh, now I will go through the control cal calculation control and uh, switch on the response because I would like to know how does it uh, look like in the ultimate limit states you can see this is the same as for the interaction because uh, it's acting only the bending moment and uh, now i will come back to the section and here you can see that the maximum utilization for a crack width is 32.8 uh, percent uh, uh, from the limit value so i will click on the results and go through the crack width and you can see that the crack width is approximately 0 0.098 uh, or 98 uh, millimeter the crack width for short term stiffness uh, okay so i think uh, fine and we can go we can go or we can continue to the design uh, design reinforcement and uh, code check uh, in the application detail. So here you can see here is a button for export to application detail. And some wizard has been appeared and we can continue with uh, the next button. And uh, here we can select the whole two members, but I would like to select only, only this one. So the length, uh, I will set it uh, 10 meter and continue here you can see uh, we can import only load cases or the combinations the combinations are exported uh, with the combination rule uh, which were transferred from the ci engineer and here we can see some combinations for uh, ultimate limit state and service elevated limit states which are uh, sorted with our um, combination uh, generator which uh, mm, giving uh, less uh, less combination than from the CI engineer because he select the most critical one so I will select all of them and continue with the button finish now all the internal forces or let's say the loads uh, sorry the loads and the geometry is automatically exported to uh, idea statica detail and here uh, we will just uh, edit uh, the geometry and uh, complete the process of the design here you can see how does it look like in our application idea sticker detail and we will start with the geometry defining you can see i have some warning uh, on the on the left window and uh, there, there are some problems with this trimmed end. And um, so uh, I remove this trimmed end. This trimmed end. Uh, I have to go through the uh, member M5. And uh, this trimmed end will be set as a non. Because it's not cut it off. It's only edit as a member. So. Now uh, I will start with the def uh, with the defining uh, the geometry because here in the application detail we have to uh, fill the uh, whole uh, let's say uh, geometry the real geometry and uh, in this part uh, we have to add this part of the member uh, because the beam is stored to, on the uh, on the column and the width of the let's say storing is uh, 0 0.6 meter so i only add or copy this uh, this part of the member change the master point and i don't know uh, which of all of them is it so 
I will switch on the name and I know that the master will be member one and uh, according to uh, master and insert point I coordinate uh, this uh, part of the beam so the master point before insert point number three and the z position will set as a zero you can see the left part of the beam uh, is uh, finished and uh, we have to do it uh, on the right side as well so the member m5 uh, is being copied and the master point is the master point five master point i'm sorry the master or uh the master point will be master point three and the instant point uh, instant point four and the z position set as zero like everything so everything works and now uh, i have mentioned that we will do the beam with the openings so we have to add uh, some openings so i will use a uh, this add button and uh, some I will use some uh, some detail for, uh, as the opening. So the opening will have a circular shape, the diameter 0 0.3 meters, and uh, it will be related to a uh, member M3 or the part from the whole member M3. So M3 is done and I can let it in the middle of the beam. Now I will use operation copy and uh, uh, due to the master point and insert point um, button, uh, I uh, select, I select or uh, create uh, the other opening uh, 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 meters on the right side from the master point 8. So I will set master point 8 and the X position will be 0 0.4 meter. Okay, everything works. And now I have to do it on the right side uh, from the point of view of the symmetry. So I only copy that and change the master point. But the X position have to be minus 0 0.40 0 .40 meter. You can see everything is fine, but the program uh, wants to me that uh, the structure is statically overdeterminate and uh, I have to use or input some uh, uh, bearing plate or supports uh, to structure where, uh, where statically uh, terminate. So we will start with the defining load transfer devices. And the load transfer devices or the, let's say the plate for, or the bearing plate will have with uh, 0 0.4 meter, will be situated uh, to master point M1 on the bottom position. And the X position will be zero. You can see the plate or the bearing plate was automatically added to this position. And I have to do it in the same way for the right part of the member. So I copy that and change the master M5. And the measured, uh, the bearing plate will be measured from the, not from the beginning, but from the end. Okay. Now everything is fine, but the program still um, is warning to me that the, the structure is statically overdetermined. So I have to use uh, some supports, how I mentioned. So we will use a point bearing plate because this uh, supports will be automatically assigned to, no automatically, but I have to do it uh, to this bearing plates. So I will use it. And you can see this is a point support and the bearing plate for point supports will be not as a new one, but will be added to the existing plate, bearing plate one. 
Now this is automatically assigned and uh, I will do it to the right in the same way for the right plate. So I only copy that and release uh, the supports uh, or support in the right or in the X uh, direction, global X direction. And uh, I have to change the bearing plate, bearing plate number two. Now uh, everything is fine. Uh, the beam is uh, from the point of view of the geometry finished and I can proceed to, to the top of the loads. And uh, here we can see what happened after export from the from the software or from the BIM. Uh, the load cases were automatically uh, uploaded as a self-weight superimposed that load as snow wind. And what I have to do, I have to assign these reactions to these uh, support, the left and the right. Um, reaction. So I will go through the load impulses and you can see this uh, yellow uh, yellow row or the yellow parts from this from these loads have to be um, added to to this bearing plate. So here I will use a transmitting device as a bearing plate one and uh, the right part or the right direction for bearing plate two. Uh, I have to do it for the all or for all uh, load cases, but not for combination, only for all load cases. Okay, I will do it. It takes some time. So, and for the wind as well, you can see from the, that from the wind load is only a horizontal, re, uh, horizontal reaction there. And now everything is fine. Uh, how I mentioned uh, uh, from the beam application, the description or some combination rule was automatically transferred or exported with the partial factors and automatically sorted to the ULS or SLS state as a characteristic or quasi-permanent combination. So uh, I don't have to do nothing for, from the point of view of the creating the combination. So we can go uh, through the reinforcement where we will start with the defining uh, the whole reinforcement, uh, let's say, the whole reinforcement of the of the beam. So I will start with the defining of the group of bars, and uh, I will change uh, change uh, the view to the real 3D and to the axonometry. And uh, I would like to reinforce this part of the beam, the bottom part. So I will change it. Uh, the definition of the bar shape on the more edges. And uh, I will add the reinforcement to edges four, five, and six. So the edges four, five, and six. You can see this is automatically uh, insert. And uh, what I have to do, I have to do, uh, I have to change the diameter for 16 on the 16 millimeter and uh, I will change the elongation of the bars from the left and from the from the right part approximately to value zero, uh, minus 1.5 meter on the left side and 1.5 meter on the left side and uh, okay. And now uh, I only copy this operation and uh, change uh, the cover. The cover is 20 millimeters and uh, I would like to have 60 millimeters. You can see the reinforcements are automatically or automatically changed uh, the position of the cover to 60 millimeters, how I would like to uh, 
uh, to have it. Now uh, I will use another group of bars and uh, uh, we will input the, the reinforcement, these two reinforcement bars uh, along the whole length of the beam in this way. So I will start with defining the reinforcement, but it will not be on the more edges, but uh, on outline or opening edge, the diameter. 10 millimeters, number two, and it will be related to member M, I'm sorry, M6. M6. Oh, sorry, it will be M, M1. M1, and it will be elongated with this, uh, with this buttons uh, to do whole length of the beam and uh, now I would like to change the anchorage type at the beginning and uh, at the end uh, for the uh, for the bone stress uh, at the end and uh, at the beginning of the uh, reinforcement so I will change it you can see the shape has changed now uh, I will add four reinforcement bars to, to the top edge so I can change it here. I only copy this operation and change from the bottom to the top. And I will change the number of bars in the layer on four. So now uh, I have finished the, the defining uh, the geometry or the longitudinal bars. And now it's time to define the stirrups. So I will use a plus button, group of stirrups. There will be automat There will be a di uh, diameter eight, and now I have to uh, imply the uh, the distances. So there will be sixteen stirrups after. Uh, 100 millimeters after that 37 stirrups after 200 millimeters and then 15 15 stirrups after 100 millimeters now you can see how does it look like so uh, I have the ch uh, I have the same reinforcement as uh, for the application beam uh, where I have reinforced uh, this part of the beam to uh, we would like to compare the results with the application beam and detail from the point of view of the deflection or crack width so i have to do it in the same way so i think uh, we have done with the geometry with the defining the geometry and uh, now i will go through the check so i will run i will run the analysis and uh, it's time to uh, give a presenter to my colleague Petra and uh, she will show you some questions which will be regarding the crack width and uh, the deflection. So Petra, it's up to you. Okay, thank you, Lukash. So um, while the analysis is running, uh, let's do a poll. So what do you think about um, deflections? Um, here is the question for you. Uh, what model gives uh, greater long-term deflections? So what do you think? Uh, it will be in um, idea statica detail or idea statica beam or the deflections will be more or less the same. So uh, choose uh, the, the option and please click on the on the on the answer which you prefer. I will give you a few more seconds and then I will end this um, short uh, survey. So just a few more seconds. You are still voting. So now I think now is the time for ended it. So, um, 
this is uh, how did the, the vote uh, go. So 10% of you voted for uh, Idea Statica Detail, 40% for Idea Statica Beam, and 50% um, that the, say, the results will be the same. Then uh, I will ask a second question. This will be about the correct width. Um, the answer, uh, the question is, what model gives lower correct width? And the options um, are the same, like in the previous uh, question. So, do you think that it will be in uh, Idea Statica detail or in Idea Statica beam or the same results? So, please click on the the right answer. Again, I will give you some uh, time. So, okay. Okay, maybe a few more seconds because you still you are still clicking. So, these are the These are the, um, the results from you. So 36% thinks that uh, the lower cracks will be in uh, Idea Statica detail, 27% in Idea Statica beam, and 36% uh, say that the uh, cracks uh, will be uh, the same. So uh, let's um, let's check it out in the particular applications. And uh, please, uh, I will take the word to uh, Lukash, who will show okay. us the, the the answers. Okay, Petya, thank you. So uh, I hope you will see my screen, and uh, you can see that the results or the checks uh, passed or are fulfilled. Uh, every form of them. Every form of them. Uh, as for ultimate limit state and service limit state as well. So we will compare. We will compare some uh, some results. At first, I would like to show you uh, the comparison between the stress uh, stress in the concrete and uh, in the reinforcement. Uh, you can see that uh, in the application detail, uh, the maximum stress for the ultimate limit stress combination uh, CO1 was um, minus 13.7. Megapascal, and uh, if I will uh, go to um, application uh, Idea Statica, Idea Statica Beam, and uh, I will go through the section check. And uh, sorry, I I have to go through the detail check, where uh, we will have a look. how the results looks like and you can see here in this combination co1 i will go through the results and the response and you can see that the stress in this part was uh, minus 13.3 and in uh, our application in our application uh, detail minus 13.7 because here uh, the results are uh, a little bit more precise so for a concrete so you can see we have approximately the same the same uh, the same um, stress and now i would like to show you the results for uh, for reinforcement you can see that the maximum stress in the reinforcement was uh, in the middle of the beam and uh, the value was uh, 423.1 megapascal in the application detail and uh, in the application in the application Sorry, this is in the application in the application RCS is 433.9. You can see that the uh, stress and strain are approximately the same, right? Uh, so now we can continue to the to the 
answering of the questions which uh, was giving for my colleague Petra. Uh, so at first I would like to show you the presentation of the results of the cracks of the cracks. So uh, I think from my point of view that uh, from the point of view of the cracks uh, the lower value for the cracks is uh, in the application in the application idea statica uh, detail because um, the model is uh, more precise and uh, there is a let's say a wall uh, 2d wall 2d wall model and uh, in the application detail we consider we consider 1d member and some uh, checks or some uh, workflow uh, from the from the error code and from the equations and this is uh, this is a calculation from the fem or finite element uh, analysis right so uh, the calculation of the cracks is more precise and the value with the comparison here is a 0 0.074 and in uh, our application uh, idea statica uh, rcs you can see here the results of the crack wave is uh, 0 0.098 millimeter. So uh, this is uh, all for the comparison between the cracks and now I would like to show you the comparison between the deflections. So I will close it and here I will go for, through the deflection check for the combination CO24 and the total the total it means it means this is uh, uh, with the, including uh, the creep uh, creep and shrinkage and uh, as well uh, as well the traffic so uh, or, I'm sorry traffic uh, as well the variable loads so the value is minus 35.1 millimeters in the application uh, idea statica beam and in our application idea statica detail uh, from the point of view of the long term long-term deflection, uh, you can see that the maximum value was uh, minus 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters. So uh, how I mentioned, uh, it's included, uh, or the creep coefficient is included as well. So I have inputted the creep coefficient to our module in the application adiastica detail. You have to go through the material models and the creep coefficient is, uh, 2.13 and uh, this come out from the application idea statica beam i will go through deflection and i will show you that the coefficient of the fee uh, as a long term coefficient for the creep is 2.13 and is added uh, or assigned to application detail and you can see the comparison of the uh, of the deflections so uh, how I mentioned, the uh, finite element analysis is more precise from the point of view of the calculation of the deflection because we consider two, uh, two modulus of elasticity in the application detail. One is for, uh, for the short-term effect and the second one is for the long-term effect where we consider the effective uh, elastic module uh, where, the, uh, where the results are uh, from this point of view. Uh, more precise and you can see that the comparison is about five millimeters so it's 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 very well it's very well uh, compared with the uh, 1d 1d analysis okay so I think uh, it's all from my side so uh, I hope you enjoyed this webinar and um, I will give a presenter to my colleague Petra, and she will give you some uh, some info to from the point of view of uh, the next webinars and some small survey uh, to the end of the webinar. So, Petra, can you take a presenter? Uh, yes, thank you, Lukash, for a very nice example. Let me share share my screen. So, no, sorry, now is the time for uh, your questions. Uh, so, there is a question from one customer um, about um, 
importing a global model from CI engineer. Uh, if it's um, necessary to have installed um, software CI engineer uh, on the PC, where is Idea Statica? Uh, no. So do you think that you can answer that? Uh, yes, of course I can answer. Uh, so you don't have to uh, install application CI engineer. So you have to only have the DXF file or sorry XML file uh, from the from the export of the CI engineer. So you don't so you don't have to you don't have it um, uh, application CI engineer. Okay, uh, thank you for the answer. Uh, then there is another question. Um, it's about um, uh, changes. Uh, if you do some change in a uh, uh, CI engineer, uh, maybe Lukash, could you could you take a presenter and show the our customer that uh, how you can update the the changes how you can um, load the changes from CI Engineer to Ideastatica Beam? Okay, so uh, if I uh, correctly understand your question, so if you change some, let's say, load? Uh, yeah, the customer asks um, if uh, it is possible to adjust the model in a, in a IDEA environment. So, I guess the answer is that uh, the changes must be done in CI Engineer, mm -hmm. and you have to run the analysis in CI Engineer, and then right. uh, you have to update these changes. So, Lukas, okay. could yes. you uh, show the, the button, um, which is in Ideastatica Beam? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Sorry, I, have, I will go, go here. So, I have to open it. Give me a second. Oh, okay, I, I thought you have it open. It <laughs> so. Okay, fine. Sorry for. So uh, everything would, uh, if you change something uh, in CI Engineer, then you have to export it to the Idea Statica Beam, and here in the reinforcement, you will use uh, export to the detail, and you have to edit, edit uh, again. But uh, you can save. Uh, if you have the same beam, you can uh, save a template. You can save a template here, I hope. Yes. Here you will create a template and uh, after that you only upload it uh, with all the reinforcement, and, but the loads uh, will be changed. Uh, will be changed uh, from your, from your uh, project, right? If this is clear or uh, yeah, I guess uh, what I meant uh, the the button uh, in Ideastatica Beam when you have update uh, results or something like that when you have the global model, I mean. You mean here? Yes. So the internal forces are exported from CI engineer. So you, at first, you have to change it in the CI engineer, and after that, uh, uh, export it to Ideastica Beam, and then to Ideastica Detail. Okay, okay. So I think it's clear. Uh, thank you, Lukash. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will answer the rest of the questions via email because we are running of the time. So. Um, I'm going to uh, take the presenter. Could you make me a presenter, Lukash, maybe? Mm -hmm, I have okay. some troubles here. Yes, your presenter. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for the joining our webinar. Uh, please, after the webinar, there is going to be a short survey, so if uh, it will take just a minute, so it will be very helpful for us to uh, fill it in. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be uh, on our website, or you can find it on YouTube. Uh, don't forget that we have also a resource center where 
uh, there are a lot of uh, tutorials, uh, manuals, etc. Uh, next webinars will be um, on a steel topic next week. Uh, next concrete webinar is going to be about news in uh, concrete uh, since it is a release webinar and it will be uh, on 7th uh, March. So uh, thank you again for um, joining in and have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.